friends in our first episode of pluralism diversity awareness series we had discussed about social common sense we had talked about communalism communal violence communal politics we had talked about role of social media role of media and the production of fake news to intensify the hatred in the society now in this second episode we like to examine a topic which is widely prevalent and which has been used very strongly to the purpose for intensifying communal politics and that is that related to temple destructions temple destruction issue became very widely prevalent also when the whole ram temple building campaign was begun in the middle of 1980s decade now it is generally said that muslim kings in india they destroyed hindu temples they humiliated hindu religion they aim to insult hindus by destroying these type of temples while this is totally false we try to see it is surely true that many muslim kings did destroy some temples here and there but what was the goal second question which arises that is it that they destroyed only the temples or some of them also destroyed the mosque the third question which comes up is it that only muslim kings destroyed the temples or is it that some hindu kings also destroyed the temples it will become clear to us that in the history muslim kings hindu kings have been destroying temples for diverse reasons i'll just give two or three sample examples like one example which i have dealt with in some of my other videos also relates to the destruction of somnath temple by mahmud ghaznavi now mahmud ghaznavi claimed that he does not believe in idol worship he wants to destroy the idols that's what he claimed he came all the way from ghazna hundreds of miles on that bad road to destroy somna temple to claim that driven by his religious motive of idol destruction he has come to somna but the real fact is that on his way there must have been many other idols right in bamiyan we note that that time there were lord gautam buddha's statues which he did not touch we also know that there may be hundreds of temples with thousands of idols which mahmud ghaznavi did not touch why he chose somnath temple for destruction of course lots of books have also been written and one of the best accounts of destruction of somnath temple which is academic thorough and rigorously professional is by romila thapar one of the great historians of india her book somnath deals with this topic now mahmud ghaznavi came to somnath he was awestruck by the immense wealth stored in the somnath temple that wealth which was there is estimated to be close to 20000 golden dinars that's a remarkable amount and that cannot be attributed to any motive of idol destruction any motive of religion one recalls that the accounts given in tarokhi bayaki the book that tells us that earlier to destruction of somnath he had also destroyed a mosque while having a battle in multan with another muslim king abdul fath daud so we see here that he through him a mosque is also being destroyed he also destroys a temple the reasons are different in case of multan it is his rivalry with abdul fath daud because of which the mosque gets destroyed now in mahmud ghaznavi's army there were many generals five of these generals were hindus tilak sodhi harjan rai and hin in his reign in somnath they had also issued coins with inscriptions of sanskrit in that so that all goes to show that whatever he did had no religious motive in the primary phase while 
he himself might have claimed that he is driven by the motive of idol destruction. Real thing when we go beyond what is obvious, we see that it is primarily the lust for gold, the lust for wealth which brought him to Somnath. Now, second we see that there is a great book of Hindi literature called Raj Tarangini. In Raj Tarangini, poet Kallan tells us that in 11th century Kashmir, there was a king called Raja Harshadev. Raja Harshadev, during his reign, he appointed a new officer. He created a new post and in Sanskrit, the title was Devat Patan Nayak. This word is constituted by three words number one dev number two utpatan number three nayak means a officer who approves the idols of the gods but the provision was that only those idols should be uprooted which are made of gold and silver which are studded with rubies and diamonds means basically the wealth of the temples should be brought to the courts to the king's treasury. That was a, as simple as that. It had nothing, no intention of insulting Hindu religion. Similarly, we recall that Maratha armies once destroyed a temple in uh, Tipu Sultan's territory in Sri Rangapatnam. Now, it was rivalry between Tipu Sultan and Maratha armies because of which the battle took place, because of which this temple got destroyed, while Maratha armies were instrumental in destroying this temple. Tipu Sultan got that temple repaired. So here we have to see as to what have been the real motives of all this. When we come to another uh, great account on temple destruction that comes from Richard Eaton. Richard Eaton, an archaeologist historian, in his book tells us that many a times Hindu kings destroyed the Kuladevta idol of the rival Hindu king with whom they were having a battle. So obviously, Hindu kings were fighting with each other, Muslim kings were fighting with each other, Christian kings were fighting with each other. So in the battle between two Hindu kings, the victor king, victor Hindu king used to demolish defeated Hindu kings Kuladevta idol, the clan god of the defeated king. And in place of that, idol he used to install his own Kuladevta clan god in that place. What was the idea? There are two ideas behind that. Number one to insult the defeated king. Number two to give a message to the people that now I am the king of this territory and you have to pay tribute to me. So this is as far as the rival Hindu kings were concerned. And there is another uh, detailed thing which we like to understand is that about the most demonized king in India, Aurangzeb. Incidentally, Aurangzeb is very much demonized in India. He is regarded as the most cruel, orthodox, anti-Hindu king in India. But if you go to Pakistan, he may be regarded there as one of the greatest kings who has ruled this part of the world. Now. What is the real story? What is famous is that Aurangzeb destroyed Kashi Vishwanath temple. Of course, there are various accounts of why this temple was destroyed. One of the accounts comes from Pattabhi Sitaramaya, which relates to the uh, some uh, temple desec desecration because of such, some act against uh, a Hindu queen. So that is one, but that account of uh, feathers and stone, one can just keep in mind. But what is more important at the same time is that Aurangzeb also gave huge amount of donations to many a Hindu temples. There is a book by Dr. Vishambhanath Pandey which tells us the title of the book is Farmans of King Aurangzeb. In this book Farmans of King Aurangzeb which came out as a brief booklet in English which is also was brought out by a Hindi publication. There is a compilation of court orders of Aurangzeb and these compilations, what is this compilation of? This compilation of those court orders of Aurangzeb which he gave to the many North Indian temples and many temples in different parts of the country as a contribution. Now, I won't recall all of them but some of the temples which I remember is number one, 
Kamakya Devi Temple in near Guwahati, then Mahakal Temple in Ujjain, then uh, Lord Krishna Temple in Vrindavan. So these are multiple temples where he gave the donation and on the top of that I will also tell that Aurangzeb was also instrumental in destroying one of the mosques in Golconda. There are accounts that Aurangzeb destroyed the mosque because the ruler of Golconda, Tana Shah, he refused to pay tribute to Aurangzeb for three consecutive years as a result of which Aurangzeb went on to recover the hidden wealth of uh, Tana Shah which was underneath a mosque. So here we see that there are Hindu kings destroying temples, there are Muslim kings also destroying temples and this leads us to a correct understanding that kings were kings, they were rulers and primarily they were ruling for the sake of power, they were ruling for the sake of wealth and in pursuit of this power and wealth they happened to destroy these temples at occasional places. So this same way there is an account about uh, Babri Mosque, such huge issue was created and beautiful accounts in a book edited by S. Gopal, uh, Anatomy of Confrontation published by Penguin tells us that the real reason of creating this trouble was again the British policy which aimed to divide the people. So while chronicling Ayodhya, Mrs. A. F. Beveridge who did the work added a footnote on her own while describing Ayodhya's Babri Mosque. What did she do? While describing the Babri Mosque, she put a star there and a footnote was added. What is the footnote? That there might have been a temple at this place. So there is no concrete evidence given and many archaeological ex excavations, many of the accounts of the history, they do tell us that there was there is no such definitive proof of temple existing in there. While currently lot of emotions have been created, lot of propaganda has been done that definitely there was a temple where Lord Ram was born. Now whether Lord Ram was born in Ayodhya or not is a matter of controversy. But one thing is sure, the period when it is described that uh, this temple was destroyed at that time, one of the greatest Ram Bhakts, greatest devotee of Lord Ram, Tulsi Das was living in Ayodhya. And he was such a great devotee of Lord Ram. In none of the writings of Goswami Tulsi Das, there is a mention that the temple devoted to his favorite lord was destroyed by a Muslim king. On the other hand, he writes in his autobiography, uh, Vine, uh, autobiography that Tulsi sar naam gulam hai ram ko, jako ruche so kahe vohu, maang ke khai bo, masit ma soi bo, lebe ko ek na debe ke do. Saying what? My name is Tulsi Das, I am devotee of Lord Ram, my give and take with the world is done. I live on the arms and I live in a mosque. So see here, a devotee of Lord Ram is living in a mosque. He is describing this in his own words, while there is absolutely no mention of destruction of any Ram temple at that particular time. So what do we conclude from this? The conclusions are simple, that yes, in history, temples were destroyed. In history, mosques were also destroyed. In history, temples were destroyed by Muslim kings and by Hindu kings for two reasons. One, for the sake of wealth. Second, for the sake of power. In a selective historiography method, it is related to the Muslim kings alone. Now, what is selective historiography? Out of 10 incidents which are given there, only that incident pick is picked up which is convenient to portray the particular picture of a king. So when it is picked up that Kashi Vishwanath temple was destroyed by Aurangzeb, it is not mentioned that he also gave donations to many Hindu temples. It is not mentioned that he's, he also destroyed a mosque in Golconda. So this is what selective historiography.
communal historiography this combination has popularized that temples were destroyed by muslim kings which is a totally fallacious view of looking at that particular those particular events and we are seeing how much damage it has done how much deeply entrenched this has become in the popular psyche popular understanding we need to overcome that to correct to come to a correct understanding for a better society thank you very much